Which also does just work as a range support. You can play double range bot lanes. That I think is really, really powerful. I just don't know that we'll see it in the LCS because teams are so used to playing around these melee and Gordon For sure. supports. Okay. We got it. Send a first pick for Your Dignitas. Your memes will remain dreams. Is it? <laughs> for well, now. We, for I, now. Said he, I didn't say first pick. I said he's going to play Corky or Tristana. That okay, is, that's sure. Fine. Yeah. Not first pick, though. No, no, not first pick. That's that's what I, I think. I mean, I hope that Jensen does move back towards Mages because he's mm -hmm. had so much success with it. Obviously, the ADs really weren't working out for them, but they yeah. are still playing, uh, you know, being played a lot globally. They're very, very popular. So uh, we'll have to see. Lilia already suggesting that we would get an AD mid here from Palafox. Of course, it's not guaranteed, but yeah, it's uh, not. highly probable. But I am happy to see energy switching in this direction. They have the forbidden combo of Lilia sleep into bullet time, which won't interrupt the sleep, even though no one can ever successfully pull it off. But more importantly, the one game that energy did win against FlyQuest last week was on Lilia. I think contracts actually looked quite good on it. Yep. So I'm happy to see them going back to this powerful pick this early in the series. Oh, we're actually are getting double range bot lane. So nice. almost always in the LCS, it is just that like fasting Senna with a melee, like a Scion or a Tom Kench or whatever. Um, but this is what I'm talking about. It's a really strong laner. You can mm -hmm. pair it with a Callista. You can pair it with something like a Kaylin or whatever. There's so many combos that it really does work well if you don't have to limit yourself to a Tom Kench. And this can play very lane dominant. And also, because the amount of sustain that you do have, it allows you to shrug off a lot of the MF poke and play really aggressive, really in their face. And this also tells me that Isles is going to be on Senna and Zven is going to be on Callista most likely. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is more a true... Enchanter supports Senna, which yep. in terms of Isles just being on something that he's recently familiar with, I think works a lot better than trying to find that Nautilus Senna combo where you have to have the AD carry warding and all that other stuff. I mean, people really do have to think about it like an Enchanter when you're yep. going the full AP build, especially if you're skipping Black Cleaver and you're just going Echoes into Moonstone and this type of build. You really deal very little damage, even if you have a tremendous amount of souls. So it really is more of like a Soraka than like yeah. an ADC. Yeah. You have poke, you have prod, but it's about the sustain. It's not about the damage is not like the lethality builds of old where you know if you had a good early game and you're getting plates and you're getting kills you could actually pump out some real damage this is not that yeah but you will still have a capable early game since it is the double yep. range bot lane you were talking about and then you're going to transition into that oppressive feeling support that she is in the state of right now we are in the second round of picks and bans corky already banned by dignitas in the first or the second round energy trying to pinch now the jungle pool already with that bite taken off the table yeah, Vi getting taken off the table. Maokai as well, so trying to target Spika here a bit. They already have their jungler. It's four jungle bands thrown towards Spika. So really trying to limit what he can play here. Uh, a mage from Jensen would make a tremendous amount of sense now. Obviously, yeah. have do uh, have a lot of AD. Uh, the Azir was banned out, but that's the only mage mid that has actually been banned. They can go very standard very easily, even with all of these jungle okay. bans, because Sejuani, Oriana, or something of that sort yeah. is still completely available. So it does dictate a little bit what Dig will go towards, but I don't think they get a massive amount of value out of that Ma Maokai and Vi ban. I mean, Rel is the obvious one, but people do sometimes go dealer's choice on this, where they'll go Rel or Nautilus or Alistar, just kind of based on their own preference. Rel, I do think, is the best setup for that MF ulti. You yeah. can yeah. really lock people in place and snap them together uh, with your ultimate. So now we're kind of waiting to see, you know, what the answer is from Spika, as well as that final pick, you know, mid from Jensen. I do think we could just get the Orianna. Mm-hmm. I imagine the Sejuani will be the final lock-in. If Energy are looking at what is easy gank setup assist to try and accelerate Got that it. bot lane, but it's going to be the Zin Zhao, so a little bit more aggressive skirmishing power is going to give Dignitas a better early game state. And it also works better with the Ori, I think, than the Sejuani. You can just throw the ball in. You can dash in with the E after you hit the, the W um, and really kind of deliver that shockwave. That's going to be a very powerful Zin because it's going to have the power of Senna as well as the power of Oriana behind it. So I definitely don't hate them going for a more Bruiser-style jungler. Mm -hmm. If they go Sejuani, the comp would be relatively low on damage. So I'm actually a pretty big fan of Dig taking the learnings of last patch and moving it here. You can also completely ignore the MF ult with your own ult. You pop the Guard yeah. and that becomes, you know, a non-issue. It's just so important for Spika to have a good game. And I think for Dignitas to be playing from a place of power because they don't really have any go button. Like, you know, yeah, sure. You can strap the ball into Zen and you can kind of walk at you. You can hope for some sort of Cassante flank, but there is no Ash Arrow. There is no Sejuani ult. There is no Jarvan. There is no any real go button. 
Uh, and the same is not true over on the energy side, where they can start a fight out you know, very, very quickly with who he, with a Q flash from contracts. I think those types of plays are easier to start. And we also have to remember, with Dokla on the Poppy, there is that chance that you go in for the Audacious Charge and you just get rejected by the Poppy W. You get stunned up. And that can make it very difficult to actually deliver that Shockwave where Jensen wants it to be. Yeah. I think for Dignitas, compared to the drafts we saw last week against 100 Thieves, they're putting a lot more priority on early game state. And I think that is something that has been a fair target of criticism for them. These guys are very experienced, and if they get to the mid and late game, they usually have a better time of figuring out what to do in those late game situations, but their early game was always such a huge liability. Now, right, we head to the rift for game one between Dignitas and Energy. And as we've already talked a lot about the Dignitas composition for the flip side of Energy, it's it's a wombo combo. Jad, you already alluded to it, the Lilting Lullaby, Bullet Time, already a powerful duo in itself. And with Isles, also, or no, I should say, Huhi on the, the rail as well. I mean, now that we have Jensen back on Orianna, this yeah. is... Listen, this is actually an incredibly small buff. It's a 0 0.05 AP ratio on the Q, but the significance of it is the fact that it was one of the most unchanged abilities in League of Legends history on Orianna. And for Jensen, this is the first time that ability has been buffed in his competitive history. <laughs> so in that sense, he is playing a new champion. And this is his best champion historically. Like he's been so good on the Orianna over the years. You know, even in drafts where he wouldn't have good setup, he always was able to find that angle to get the perfect shockwave has been so consistent. And I think this, if ever, gives you a reason to believe as a Dignitas fan, you know, because you can say, okay, we were losing just because he was on ADs. Now he's back on the tried and true. Let's see if he can find that success. I think we're going to be getting a lane swap, and I don't know if Jensen knows about it at the moment, though, because there's a poppy in the bush. Uh-oh. I mean, he's going to get slammed by Dokla, but there's no wall nearby, so he doesn't get hurt that much. But Jensen is going to take a lot of damage. No need to pop the flash, but I wouldn't be surprised if he needs to take an early TP. One of the possible benefits of initiating the swap is if your top laner gets that early move on mid, it can set the Jace up as an advantage. Now Isles moving into the jungle of contracts, and Dokla getting a little bit of value, at least, from that. We'll see what happens with this stacking wave and the Xin Zhao pathing top to bot. Well, and this is actually really good if they can take away, you know, the camps on this bottom side, because this is their weak side of the map where you just have that 1v2. So if Contracts can take all these camps, then go up and cover his top side, he's going to be feeling pretty good about that situation. Um, and Isles and Zven obviously wanted to be playing, you know, this dominant 2v2 lane with the double range, bullying out Puhi and FBI, because the lane swap, that's being negated. Yep. Yeah, I mean, looking at the early jungle pathing, uh, Lilia is just going to be doing a normal full clear. Be regular is just going to do a normal full clear down. So if Dig hold this way properly, it's going to be very difficult for Dokla to get levels. He's got half of his level, his experience bar towards level two now. Yeah. And Zin is skipping camps He's to pressure dive. this dive early. Yeah, the wave is already being stacked up. So this is the time for Spika to jump on the Dokla. He's still level one. He doesn't have the extra base stats from level two. He and he's leave. already conceding the wave. And yeah, on the other side, Dokla's getting that whole wave because Lilia opted to full clear, so Licorice is in an amazing position here. Yeah, Licorice is going to be able to get that. The trade-off is that Lilia is still farming and Spika is just sitting here. You know, he's not actually yeah. getting any camps. So it's that trade-off of, you know, how much experience advantage can you get? They're trying to keep Dokla away from the tower. Oh, he snuck back in. That was pretty nicely done. The question is, is he too low? Can he get two? They're going to try to juggle the turret aggro. One more auto attack. Ren for first blood to Sven. Oh, he was very close to hitting level two there. If he gets that, he probably lives. Sven also took some turret shots, but that's that was the risk there by Dokla. It fails. Contracts, yes, he got to full clear, but Speak is still only going to be two camps behind. This is a very good lane swap start for Dignitas because yeah. the only advantage that Energy would have had was Dokla pressuring the mid lane early, but Jensen's already recovered. Well, I mean, just, just look at the experience difference. That is really the payoff here. You know, the gold difference is not that big between, uh, you know, the, the junglers versus the top laners and whatnot. Dokla tried to play this out pretty well. You know, just ease back through them to try to get in. Thought he was going to yeah. be able to hit two. If he got the level up, maybe he does live. Honestly, though, they could probably just reset and re-dive it. At the very yeah. least, you know, he did get a summoner off of his Ven. But the problem is, is this. You know, you level two, and you look over here at Licorice, he's already level four. And lane swaps have been abandoned, so... Not a good start there for Dignitas. Dokla is also with the top. This is the strange thing to me about this swap is the top lane Poppy 
can be a counter pick to the top lane Cassante. We've seen this lane play out Poppy favored a lot of times. And it was also going back to the draft. This is the first Poppy game of Dokla this split. It's Licorice who'd actually played the top lane Poppy four times. Yeah, obviously they're willing might, to sacrifice that, that Poppy or? more because no. of the 2v2 bot. You know, that's the big concern is yep. that MF will get slammed in this 2v2. If they pull off this dive, this is massive. Oh, he cleansed nothing. Okay, but he dodged a stun and now energy are in trouble. They have to bail with the teleport coming in from Jensen to stop the dive from being persisted here. Who he is forced wow. to flash, so is FBI. I don't think energy they should landed be it. fine, but the root lands and FBI is in trouble. Dignitas are turning around every play set by energy. Dignitas off to the races. Sven cleansed nothing, but that's because the Q missed. So <laughs> he was expecting the Rel Q to land to have to cleanse it. Jensen is ready there with the teleport. Now with the one kill on the Orianna, this is the comfort zone for Dignitas because previously they've been a team that is very poor about creating their own advantages. But now that they have that 1700 gold lead, one through their own dive and two from their own dive defense, they can kind of just slow play this out with their strong scaling. Yeah, I mean, I understand the angle here because they had a stack wave on them. Sven actually was behind on farm, but the early route from Isles, the fact that he's playing Guardian, the fact that he got those additional healing in for Sven and a very fast TP from Jensen. And then Isles here uses the move speed of the E, catches up, yep. W flash over the wall, gets the root on FBI, they grab that kill. Jensen's the one that actually does pick it up, so not much of a cost for him dropping that wave mid as well is really, really big for dig i mean that was just a high risk high reward type of play for energy that did not pay off whatsoever it's because here at the grubs for the first rotation it looks like contracts was able to yoink away the first one but because of the powers then coming on over with isles dignitas will force energy away and we'll pick up the other two i mean this is now a map state where dignitas have full control of whatever objective they want to contest for they're actually reinitiating the swap so Part of this was to make sure they didn't give up three grubs to the jungler who was ahead. So they had five people in the area ready to contest those grubs. As soon as they take the grubs, they teleport Licorice down to the bot side. He's actually going to be able to force the teleport out from Dokla as well, maintain that two-level lead, and get yet another plate most likely. Yep, he'll be able to get that plate no problem. Has the demolish proc, has that level lead. And they're trying to push up here because Spika is in the area, so they don't want to allow oh, wow. FBI to get back to the tower. So FBI is going to be denied that full wave. Who he could try to play some shenanigans here and hold the wave outside the tower range but then it becomes a waiting game yeah. and eventually you will have to let it crash and that's what he realizes because if you tank that for too long then they just dive you which is what they're going to try to do anyway can fbi bail out his support in a 3v2 who he's already taken a lot of damage after shot Spica is popping the ulti but oh, the pressing guard oh. flashes away from the last turret shot and now fbi is under the tower do dignitas have enough spells and hp to re-dive Onto FBI. They love to try. They're gonna go for it again. The AD carries are taking up the turret wow. aggro. Very clean by Dignitas. That was so well done by Dignitas, zoning off FBI, then corralling who he you know, forcing him into a situation where he could not defend. They juggle the aggro really expertly there. And Dignitas now 3k gold lead. We're not even eight minutes into the game. This is a stomp already. Everything has gone the way of Dignitas. Contracts isn't even comfortable starting this Drake when Spika spent the last minute in the top side. He's slowly waddling his way towards his wolves. Four CS advantage in the jungle. 3,000 gold lead for Dignitas. Again, re-swapping. They have just been one step ahead this entire time. I mean, the items for the AD carries just feel so depressing as well when you're looking over. You have a, a Vamp Scepter and a Cull. Like, you are going to be so far away from being strong. Uh, and Sven already has his tier two boots, already working towards that Blade of Rune King. You know, he is going to be quite strong here. They swap back. They're going to be able to get first tower on bot side pretty much guaranteed. I don't yeah. see any way that Dokla could actually defend that. And then they could even pick up the dragon if Spika wants to go down there. Licorice is not going to be able to be shoved off by a Vamp Scepter only MF. So he's going to be able to pick up all that farm. Bad just goes to worse, it feels like, for energy. Yep, energy immediately recalling that top side. Uh, they know these wave states are bad. I don't know if they're are good wave states in the current game for them though <laughs> there's less the bad ones maybe <laughs> yeah it can be less terrible <laughs> which you know if you're nine minutes in and every lane state is about bad and worse <laughs> it's not a good start no i mean mid lane's going fine pal fox looking around the map it's uh, not looking pretty out there. Now they, they might have the three-person gank here, maybe. Dokla is level seven, but Isles and Sven are going to respect the pressure from energy and not go for the turret quite yet. I mean, they have full ward coverage as well. 
So they bring Poppy down. Yeah, that's not a jungle Poppy. That's a top lane Poppy abandoning her post. So that's just the top turret going down. Yeah, and I mean, at, at the end of the day, you're dropping two plus waves to even attempt this play because Dogla had a TP bot. No one has a TP to go back towards top. So yeah, you prevent the first tower gold from going to Zven, but instead it just goes to Licorice and you lost two waves in an already really rough game where you're already down a ton of experience. He's denying the entire wave before allowing that tower to go. So then they're just going to get that tower bot right after. And we know that Cassante can take over a game. So giving him the gold is also really scary. And just a reminder for everyone at home, this is just the first round of the lower bracket. The winner of this will advance to the second round, which will be next Saturday. And then we've got another couple matches in the upper bracket next weekend as well. The first brick is claimed by Dignitas. FBI already forced the flash away. And who he could be next if they get one more slow. Flashes away, but Sven is going to hop, jump, and skip forward to help Isles pick up the kill on Ahui. Dignitas absolutely steamrolling energy. This has to be one of the most one-sided 10 minutes and 30 Shockwave? seconds oh. okay. of the split. Maybe yeah. even the most. If anything was going to happen to bring it back, it would have been Palafox getting some type of kill on a Jensen here. That's avoided. It's two side lane turrets, both side lanes completely stomping. Mid lane has a kill. Jungle's not behind, and they have all the objectives. I, I would honestly love to hear from the stats team, like, what was the largest gold lead we have seen at 10 minutes? Because this is ridiculous. Like, yeah. It's yeah. so rare to see a 5,000 gold lead around 10 minutes into the game. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be tough for energy. I feel like at this point, you're almost already checked out on game number one. You have to just start <laughs> thinking about game number two. You know, you continue looking for desperate plays. You continue looking for anytime you see, oh, we have a man advantage. You just pull the trigger, hope that it works out. But for energy, they're going to need like five plays like yeah. that in a row to even have a chance of coming back. They're going to get four grubs, but can they ever use them will be the question. I did get confirmation that it's the largest dig gold lead of the split at eight minutes, which was 2.9K. Okay. We'll get that at 14 minutes as well if they keep expanding because Spika is in. He's going to charge into the fight, pops the pressing guard, and blocks a lot of the damage from range. Isles is able to pick up the first kill. Bullet time rips through, but Lycra is undeterred. Spika does fall, but it's a sacrificial lamb for the greater cause of Dignitas's win. Yeah, it is a one for one at the end of the day. The bullet time coming out from FBI got quite a bit of damage down. And then a nice shock blast from Palafox snipes one out to get the first kill on the board here. But at the end of the day, still, the HP advantage is in the hands of Dignitas. They do have the Senna healing them back up. They're going to push up mid and start taking even more plates. I mean, we are not 14 minutes in. Yeah. They are potentially looking at a full 15 plater. That's 12 plates already 12 minutes in with the two side lanes being completely down. I will say on that fight, Spika did go in a hair early, probably felt extra invincible, but I think they didn't have the Senna ult from the previous dive that they had executed, so he does die at the very end to a Palafox snipe. And I see no reason for Dignitas to relent here. Zven and Isles should just be camping this mid lane, taking little pokes every time they can. I mean, everyone on Dignitas has a first item power spike. Everyone is so insanely strong. If you have any even numbers fight, it's winning. So Dignitas should always feel incentivized to just push the, the tempo and the advantage as much as they can and do not give energy any room to breathe. And you can see Isles already 55 souls, so the range is going up. You're gonna get more and more annoying with that. Uh, as we are seeing this engage one more time. You know, Huhi finding that fight. They do get on the Spika, and he gets slept up, and then the bullet time is able to help them pick it off with this nice shock blast. Yeah, Spika barely getting hit by that last snipe. If he would have actually turned tail completely, he would have been able to keep the team deathless, but that's not a huge loss for them. It is but one kill going over to the Jace, mm -hmm. and it's really just about them holding control now. You can see Orianna push deep top, Cassante push deep mid, and as long as they keep wards throughout the jungle here, then the mid lane is extremely safe to just keep taking this turret down. Yeah, um, but at the end of the day, we will see if they're going to be able to do that. Echoes of Helia is completed, obviously, for Isles, as you called out, Rafa, so he's going that more full enchanter style build. You can see he's working on more AP after that, so not going to be going to the Black Cleaver like we saw last week. Yeah. Uh, Black Cleaver was more of a rush item in that game, but I think it was also because the Senna picked up a couple early kills and was just like, hey, I can buy this expensive item. Yeah, I played a few games of this Senna. I, also, the, the viewers probably have as well. I checked Lawlytics. It's the most played support champ in the game right now. Yeah, the Senna. healing Senna. It is really strong. I mean, Senna is one of my most played supports for a lot of years. And I played this last time it was meta years ago with the, the kind of AP style build. And it was already pretty strong then. It's yeah. just even way better it's now. Sor it's Soraka with the gun. Like, you get, <laughs> you get the bonus healing from the Dream Maker. The Echoes of Helia stacks so synergistically. It is... 
absurd feeling. Like, none of the numbers themselves read super high, but you get to a point where your Q is healing people for 800 when it feels like, and it's it's kind of your whole team. So if they if they get into team fights and they stay kind of grouped up with the Cassante and Zin being able to catch all of the Senna Qs, with this Golby, they will be just unkillable frontline. Yeah, I mean, you just put out so much healing, like you're saying, especially if you do get those pass-throughs. 800 is maybe like full stack, you know, echoes and all this extra stuff if you have you know, a lot of items. Um, but it definitely can be a ton of healing. And the ulti shield scales with that as well. So it is very, very powerful. Um, and, you know, it is something that is going to have to be respected. And I wouldn't be surprised if it, you know, does get banned out later on in the series. But honestly, this game has not really been about the Senna. You know, the Senna has been strong, but everything has gone wrong for him. Yeah, and that is, I think, is the bigger picture for this game so far. When we were coming into the series, we had questions about who was going to be more coordinated. Because the last time we saw them in last week against 100 Thieves and FlyQuest, respectively, they both looked out of sync. But Dignitas have been so coordinated in every punch that Energy has tried to throw, in, the counter's been that much greater. And I think the worst part for Energy is they're the ones that wanted the swap, and they're the ones that failed the swap. This yeah. would be, to me, their last ditch effort if they try any type of fight here in the Dragon Pit. I think the smart play is actually to concede and wait until your items are a little bit closer, but we have to see how they end up playing this out. Yeah, I think it's just going to be a give, honestly. I mean, we'll find out. Someone's got to get up top to answer Licorice, who is pushing up there. No one heading up there just yet, so maybe Energy are going to try to force some sort of desperate play. Who he has a pretty good angle to maybe come in from behind. But Sven and Niles are playing towards the bottom side. They know yeah. that Hui could be on that top side. And Speak is looking for a potential wraparound, so they could get preempted on the play. Yeah, FBI might be isolated under the tower here. Hui sends it on the Magnus Storm, but everyone else is diving FBI under the tower. The tower is also gone, and here comes the collapse of the top laners. But the fight is already losing for energy, so Dokla has to scram. Contract's doing everything he can to hold the line against the Tier 2 tower defense but the rest of Dignitas are not even concerned at all. And everybody at full health. The gold difference was so huge in this fight. Poppy Alt knocks back two, so it's now even numbers. And Contract is in trouble, still has Flash. Finally pops it, looks for the sleep onto Licorice, but this is oh, a Cassante. Okay, it's enough damage. Energy are able to stop the siege for at least now, but Dignitas at almost 7,000 gold ahead against NRG with not even, we're not even at the 20 minute mark yet, guys. Baron is not even on the table and Dignitas are already <laughs> sieging into the base. Yeah, the Dignitas uh, support their Isles, 2,317 gold at 14 difference between the supports. A record of this split. Uh, not surprising, that is a pretty I enormous guess, amount yeah. of gold. It's all plate and kill gold, basically, because mm -hmm. it's definitely not from the CS. He gets a little bit from the souls of Senna, but that's more of a fun fact for how ridiculous this game has become. I like the attempt here from Energy. You know, who he tries to go in, Zven flashes out, you know, is yeah. going to be able to be okay from this spot. But Dig, no, if we are grouped, there's nothing they can do, right? So everyone from Dig comes in, collapses. They don't underestimate the play. They're not spitting off and trying to take top lane tower plus the dragon, all these different things at the same time. And uh, in an even fight, there's just really no chance for energy. Only way to get a kill is someone like Licorice, you know, diving under the inhibitor tower as he did and then getting CC'd up. We're almost 18 minutes into the game. Energy are trying to fight back for vision control on this top side of the map before the Baron does spawn in the next couple of minutes. On the back half, we saw that Dignitas took the second dragon of the game. I mean, Dignitas, if they want to, they can slow play this game out as their champions scale further and further into the game. But, I mean, this this looks almost impossible for energy to come back from. It's only on Dignitas to throw this game yeah. at this point. I, I'd put it at 99-1. So, like, I think this is honestly the time where energy needs to preserve their mental as much as possible. They'll try and keep making plays, maybe get a few nice looks, not necessarily expect to win the fight. I kind of more just want to discuss, you know, where energy and dig go from here throughout the rest of the series. I mean, one thing I will say you can take away as a positive for Palafox is that he is playing well individually. And Palafox is a guy who has been having some struggles here, you know, this split in the LCS. Uh, traditionally, even when Energy were having bad games last year, he was their rock. He was the guy that was always performing. And he's been, been pretty vocal about how he's disappointed with his own play, about how things have been looking. So getting Palafox, you know, back to that level in this mid lane matchup, is going to be really, really good. But on the other side, Jensen, back on Orianna, back on Comfort, also playing well, is going to make that job even tougher for Palafox. And the mid lane matchup even in this game was pretty interesting to me because both players 
defaulted back to things they had massive success with in the past. When Palafox made his run through summer playoffs, as there's some contesting of this red buff, he was the master of the Jace Tristana matchup. He yep. win both sides of it. So finding windows where he can play those champions, where he found his most success on, I think would be something to build off of throughout the series because it does also feel like energy is kind of throwing things at the wall and seeing what sticks. Like, the Jace is good, but the Poppy is a huge miss. The lane swap is a huge miss. Uh, not having Senna priority figured out in the right way from last week to this week and then letting Dig first pick it away, also a miss. I think the real question, though, is, is it, you know, a failure of idea or is it a fail of execution? Because to me, it's more of a failure of execution. You know, I don't think that there's anything inherently wrong with doing the lane swap or inherently wrong with the draft. Sure. But the way that they executed on it, obviously, everything went really, really bad. Their bot laner, you know, their, well, Dokla, who was in the bot lane, their top laner, got mm -hmm. dove, while Licorice is farming all the experience, not getting pushed off at all. You know, that just can't happen in these kind of situations. You know, generally, that alone is enough to, to sometimes end the game. Uh, where they execute the dive and you fail yours. And in this situation, it went even worse because they tried this three-man dive, they got TP'd on. Not only did they fail the dive, they got killed. So it's it's really, really tough in those situations to have a kind of unemotional read on what the problem was in a game like this where everything failed. Yeah. Because like you said, it's not like Dignitas initiated all of those moves in the early game. There were counter punches to things that Energy did not execute cleanly. The counter punches were unfortunately to their own face in, in this game. <laughs> they, they missed the target <laughs> yeah. and punched themselves. So uppercut straight to yourself. Uh, Jensen is forced to flash away. Maybe we'll here. see this advantage from Palafox, but now it's double teleports oh. from both teams. The healing from Isles Global Ultimate gives Jensen a big shield. Palafox and FBI now have the man advantage against Licorice, and he oversteps his boundaries. Energy <laughs> are able to pick up one, and Jensen is now cut off. He's going to look for the teleport. Can they get in range? Dokla has flashed. If he sees it, flash oh! wall slam! And stops Jensen in his tracks. Okay, that's that's a, a mental victory there. I say you flip Baron. Just go flip for it. it. No, There's no reason not to at this point. You are so far down. Just YOLO it on the Baron. Hope that you can get a kill. Hope that you can make something happen here. They committed so much to that play, though. It is going to be tough. I, I, They're on it. It's 5v3. Both soul laners are dead. Neither of them have TP. This is actually a window back. Let's see if Sven, Isles, and Spika can hold themselves against Energy. They have a massive gold advantage, but it's a 5 on 3. Sleep on the Isles. He can be the first target, but they turn right onto Spika. Eliminate the jungler. Eliminate the spike contest from the side of Dignitas. Sven and Isles are still alive. 2v5 at the moment, but they keep their range, and it might be enough that Energy no longer can take the Baron. Yeah, smartly played there by Isles and Zven. Isles is being so annoying here. Almost has 100 souls, by the way, so that's why that range is getting ridiculous. Yes, they did have a good turn on a speaker. Yes, they did have that kill, and it is a bit of a swing for Energy, but because Isles and Zven don't also die, the mid laner, the top laner are respawning. They can't actually get to it. This is a good play initiated by Palafox. Again, he really was the lone positive force in the early game here. And again, here's here's him making action happen. Yeah, and the big thing that actually wins this is the fact that the Lilia and the Rel beat the rest of Dignitas up here for the eventual support. Uh, Jensen should have been just the lone death there, but because Dig thought they were so far ahead, they end up leaving the door a little bit open. That is a big mistake, actually, for Dignitas. Could have been a lot worse if we think about the Baron actually going over, if the objective bounty could have been converted. But as of now, it's still very heavily in the favor of Dig. That was a that was a pretty big window, though. Yeah, because it's like what you guys said about 10, 15 minutes ago. I mean, Energy would have to get five miracle winning fights in a row to shore up the gold deficit that they have against Dignitas right now. Yeah, I mean, Palafox, though, still deathless. Contract's deathless as well. Palafox, you know, helping to make yeah. that play happen was big, so they haven't given up in this one just yet, but Dignitas is moving themselves to Soul Point, which is going to be difficult. When you're behind and they get Mountain <laughs> Soul, it always feels that much harder. I love the Dignitas face emote, by the way. That is fantastic. <laughs> that is an S-tier emote right there. Well, we'll see if Dignitas can maintain their form and not look like that emote again in the, <laughs> the next <laughs> coming fights. Energy. A little bit of confidence boost knowing that Dignitas is not completely immortal and they can punish some of these mistakes that Dignitas make when they're overextending on the side lanes here. No teleports from the solo laners of Dignitas for a few more, at least under a minute. 
And at the very least, energy does have playmaking, right? Yeah. You know, they have the ability to try to look for outplays in the side lanes with Palafox. They have the ability to maybe find that perfect snap engage from Huhi, find that multi man sleep from contracts, you know, eject multiple people from a fight from Dokla and turn it into a 5v2 or a 5v3. And these are the kind of things when you get this behind that you really have to hope for. Of course, if Dignitas, you know, spreads properly and plays properly, it's not really going to be possible from this kind of a deficit. Yeah. But it is getting closer and they are becoming more competitive. This is a, a big caveat, but if you ignored the first 12 minutes, the last 12 minutes have been fine for energy. That's true. true. It's just a shame that uh, energy is missing an arm and a leg from the first 12 minutes. <laughs> this it does is true. make it harder. <laughs> this is true. It makes these effective 12 minutes yeah. not as effective. They are making Dignitas earn it from a spot where it felt like the game was going to be free, yeah. which I mean, is actually something they should be able to mentally build off of if they go to the next game. That's kind of the, the beauty and the curse of, of MOBAs, right? Is that you know if you have a bad early game, the opponents get stronger, so it just gets harder yeah. and harder and harder. So, you know, a good play later that would, at parity, win you the game does not mm -hmm. do so, right? You know, that's the challenge, is that the early game can really make things incredibly difficult for you. Yeah. The fact that Energy are finding some of these windows, like you said, Jad, that's the mental confidence that you need to try and maintain going forward into such a long series like this one, where it is a best of five, no longer the best of three from the regular season. And now Dignitas are gonna try to start this Baron up. There was a TP ping behind Jensen, but then they moved that control ward, so it's not a flank they're gonna be going for. They will see that this Baron has been started, though. There's just no reason to flip this, though, for Dignitas. I mean, surely no. they're gonna try to turn. Maybe Licorice all out over the wall. Contracts has been many situations where he steals it, but Whoa. Suica secures the Baron. I thought that Contracts might have had it, but now the jungler for energy is gone, and it's a five on four in the map for Dignitas. I mean, that was an absolute burger flip. Yeah, there was the close to help you, you know, time that run, but how many times have we seen that fail over the years? I'm really surprised they committed to it. I thought, if anything, maybe Licorice was gonna flash over the wall and then all out to push Contracts further away and, and secure it in that way. But letting Contracts into the pit is one of maybe the only ways energy could hope to come back. So Dig, yeah. definitely risky. It does work out for them though. And now with the Baron buff and a massive gold lead, they're gonna knock down all of these outer towers. They're gonna extend this gold lead. I mean, law of averages. If there's enough Dig Barons, eventually <laughs> you're gonna have a Dig Season Baron. So they're just like figured that uh, this one was gonna be fine. Fair. Yeah. 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 Cause I agree with you. What are they doing? They, they just let Contracts have a free chance at smiting it. Yep. He, and he's, aside from X Smithy, stolen the most barons of any player in LCS history. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Licorice was playing to the wall, so maybe he thought he could like find an angle to like get vision on him and, and stop him before he could get the smite. <laughs> but then they needed to stop damage on the Baron and let him come in, then all out him back over the wall. Like there needed to be something uh, there from Licorice for sure, uh, and from Dig to be able to prevent that. But at the end of the day, it did not end up happening. They are massively ahead, 10K, looking for the last outer tower here now as they do push in through this bot lane and look to try to put the finishing touches on this game. Sven Jensen and Isles currently pushing into the tier two tower. Spica will join them. Licorice is joining from the other side as he's actually teleporting in, or Jensen, I should say, is now Dignitas. After the tier two turret, they back off, wait for the next minion wave while Energy tries to Deal with Licorice, who's also pushing in through the mid lane. Yeah, Licorice has played a really strong game after getting that early advantage. Uh, hasn't let his experience advantage decline, which can be a trap that a lot of top laners fall into when they are very far ahead. They oftentimes will overgroup because it seems easy, but he's very strong at applying the side pressure, and he's actually just letting them break these turrets. This might be the look for energy. Watch Uhi. Oh, nice flash, though, by Jensen to dodge the wall slam of Dokla. He's going for it anyway. Uhi, massive Magnus Storm, but the bullet time is already used, so there's no real damage to follow up. Contract is trying to get into the middle of all four members, but Licorice is now making the collapse. Big shockwave from Jensen, scatters energy around, and Licorice here for the cleanup. He's got the broom, and he's sweeping them all under the floor. A double kill for the top laner of Dignitas, and this game is finally over. Dignitas clean up energy, push on the Nexus, and they're going to take this first game in convincing fashion. Absolute stomp from the Dignitas squad. There is not even a chance that energy was going to come back. And Dignitas will move ahead 1-0 to zero in the series. Very strong opening game here for Dignitas. A recovery from their atrocious week they had last week against 100 Thieves. I would say, though, this game was all about the first 10 minutes. Yeah. 
successful dives, successful dive defenses, the best early game we've seen from Dignitas all season. So all signs do point to Dignitas being the improved team from last week. We'll have to see what Energy can do to bounce back in game two.